frustrating because the person with mental health issue is answering all the questions right. They know exactly how to act. And the person that called us is so irritated and acting out so much, we're trying to figure out who we're there to help. You have to approach it with compassion and patience. Uh, the only scenario that I can think of that would be just slightly worse than, than, be, than dealing with a family that, that's in a, a mental health crisis with a loved one is notifying them that their loved one's been murdered. I've done that more often than I care to remember, and it boils down to this, and it's been mentioned, it's dignity. It's treating people with dignity, understanding and having the ability, and it's not easy, I can assure you, that it involves training and experience, but it's, it's being able to realize that this particular incident is very important and maybe the most uh, dramatic issue or event that may happen in that family in their entire lives. And when you get to leave and go to the next call or go to the next investigation or deal with the next family, they will deal with that for a lifetime. And you need to realize that and deal with it accordingly. And that's the dignity and, and the humanity. Uh, families can often be a source of help to law enforcement uh, when we're responding to issues of mental health by giving some background. We talked about it earlier, to providing information so that we can assist them and, and direct them to the proper course of action. I'll take it this time. I want to thank uh, all the participants today. I want to thank all of you in the audience. On behalf of NAMI Tulsa, we want to make our services better known to the community. We offer classes, as you've heard us say. We try to make every class available free of charge uh, to family members, to individuals in recovery, and uh, to the general public in different ways. I'd like uh, all of us to give these guys a good round of applause.